diesel locomotives are used by many railroads today, passenger trains, and to move freight cars loaded with things we need. Diesel locomotives are strong. They pull long trains of heavy freight cars over mountain passes. Diesel locomotives are fast. They can pull streamlined passenger trains at high speeds across our country. People choose the streamliner when they want to travel quickly from one place to another. Do you know what makes these locomotives go? They are driven by electricity that is generated by powerful diesel motors. If you could look through the side of a diesel locomotive, you would see the engineer's cab, the electric control panel, the generator, the fuel tank, the diesel motor, the supercharger, and the water cooling system for the motor. An electric switch on the control panel starts the diesel motor. It makes the generator turn the crankshaft of the engine to move the pistons up and down in the cylinders. Exhaust from the engine turns the supercharger. Air, filtered through vents alongside of the locomotive, enters the supercharger and is forced under pressure into the engine. Fuel oil pumped into each cylinder is mixed with the air under pressure to make an explosion. Explosions in the cylinders keep the engine running. Electricity from the turning generator flows through the engineer's cab to the electric motors that turn the wheel. When the diesel locomotive has finished a trip, it is taken to the service yard where it is made ready for the next journey. There are many busy workers in the service yard. The man who takes the engineer's place in the cab is called a hostler. First, the hostler moves the engine to the sand tower. One of the workmen fills the sand box over each set of wheels with clean, dry sand. The sand is used to keep the wheels of the heavy locomotive from slipping on the tracks when the engineer starts the train. Now the hostler moves the locomotive to the wash rack where the dirt from the long journey will be washed away. The wheels and lower parts of the locomotive are cleaned first. They are sprayed with a mixture of oil and oakite to loosen the greasy dirt. A strong spray of hot water washes away the oil and dirt. The yard worker swings the nozzle of the steam hose back and forth until the running gear is shiny and bright. Another worker gets ready to fill the fuel tank. He clips a safety ground wire to the locomotive to ground static electricity that might cause a fire. Then he opens the fuel tank and screws in a short pipe that will hold the fuel nozzle to the tank. The fuel hose hangs from the oil pen stock. It is hard work to pull the long, heavy hose to the side of the locomotive. When the nozzle is fastened to the connecting pipe, the worker is ready to press the lever that lets the oil flow into the fuel tank. Water tanks are also filled. Water is used to cool the diesel motors of the locomotive 
just as it is used to cool the motor of an automobile. When the large hose from the water hydrant has been fastened securely to the locomotive, the workman turns on the water and fills the tank to the brim. Finally, the locomotive is given a complete shower bath. It is sprayed first with water and then with liquid soap. The hostler runs the locomotive slowly along the wash rack under the tall sprinklers. While the diesel locomotive is still wet and covered with soapy spray, a crew of workmen scrubs it clean. Eight men are needed to cover the large locomotive. Four work on one side and four on the other. Each man scrubs the section he can reach with his long handled brush. Working together, they clean every inch of the big locomotive as it moves slowly along the track. The diesel is driven through the shower again to wash away the soapy scrub water. Back through the spray once more for a final rinse and the cleaning job is complete. Now the hostler runs the locomotive away to the engine house. The diesel locomotive is clean and shining from top to bottom. Its fuel tanks are filled. It has a good supply of water and sand. After a final inspection in the engine house, it will be ready for the next journey. When the diesel is needed for the next trip, the hostler runs it out of the engine house and turns it over to the engineer. The engineer takes his place on the right side of the locomotive. When the fireman climbs into the cab, he will sit on the left side of the locomotive. The engineer takes over the controls and starts the locomotive on its way to pick up a train of passenger cars. Diesel locomotives can be made up of several units according to the power needed for their job. This diesel locomotive has four units coupled together. It can be driven from either end. uses hand signals to direct the engineer as he couples the locomotive to the train. releases the air brakes when the train is ready to leave and the diesel locomotive begins another journey. Whee! 